Hello everybody, welcome back to my hangar. If you don't know who I am, my name is Micah Messer, I'm a private pilot, and I own Rosie. It's Cherokee 140. It's 1968, but you might look at it and go, it doesn't look complete. Where's the propeller? Where's the cowling? Where's all the parts? Well, if you haven't watched, you need to go back and watch the video that I made just a little while ago about having a prop strike. Now, what is a prop strike? Prop strike is where the propeller of your aircraft strikes an object. Now, depending on your aircraft, depending on your engine, that can be defined differently depending on what the FAA and the airworthiness directives that they put out, or service bulletins by your manufacturer might have put out. Here with the Lycoming 0320 Echo 2 Alpha, this particular engine, along with a lot of Lycoming engines, there's a few exceptions, but most, when you have a prop strike, and it defines it in different bullet ports, and I'll show it here on the screen for you. You can see the different bullet points here regarding what is considered a prop strike according to Lycoming, and then eventually by the FAA. Now, most of these don't apply to the situation I had. The situation I had, I was flying, been flying for about two and a quarter hours, coming back home from a, uh, a video shoot up in North Alabama. Once I was coming, approaching the airport, I got into the, the downwind of the pattern, and as I reached the touchdown point, uh, the threshold of the runway, I hear something go like a metal hitting metal, um, almost like that, but a lot faster. When all of a sudden something flies by my window, a piece of my aircraft comes flying by my window. Obviously, I'm concerned. I bring power back to idle, I do a power off 180, come and land on runway 36. As I touch down, this giant piece comes off the front of my aircraft, hits my prop, and goes flying off the side of the runway. Now, in this certain, this certain circumstance, there's a, some gray area when it comes to, is that considered a prop strike? Well, a prop strike, according to the FAA and the Lycoming, is a prop strike if the, the propeller has to be repaired. And unfortunately, my aircraft, my propeller, does have to be repaired. It has to be overhauled because of the damage that was conducted to it. Now, do I think the engine itself uh, has damage inside of it? I personally don't think so, but I don't know. I can't crack it open. I'm not an AMPIA or an AMP that can inspect this, sign it off saying it's good to go. I don't have the equipment to do that or anything of that nature. So, what has to happen is I have to send this engine off to a company to break open the, the engine, check it out, do some dye penetrant tests, some magnetic particle testing, making sure there's nothing wrong with the engine, nothing's broken inside of it. Also with the propeller, it has to be sent off and gotten overhauled. Now as you saw with the last short video I did, I didn't really explain what I was doing, but I had gone ahead and removed the cowlings, I'd taken off the propeller, and uh, yeah, the, and the muffler, I'd taken off the muffler as well. That's pretty much where I left it. Because at the time, I didn't know if my insurance would cover this particular incident. Thankfully, I got word today, which today's the 22nd of September, I got word from my insurance company that all good to go with the quotes and everything. Uh, it's gonna be upwards of $14,000 plus to get this repaired and taken care of. Insurance is going to cover it. Um, it's a freak accident, guys. We still don't know exactly why it happened. Uh, the, the threading seems okay. It's, it's just such a weird situation. The blending light bulb itself, it's shattered and outside of the, the um, assembly itself, but the assembly ring, the retainer ring that holds the bulb in is still there. It's just a very weird circumstance. We're not entirely sure what exactly happened, but we do know that the prop did strike an object, did cause damage to the prop, and therefore prop strike AD comes into effect. So this is gonna set off to what we consider to be an IRAM, which is an inspect and repair as necessary. I'm hoping there's not really any repair necessary inside of this engine, just an inspection. Uh, the replacement parts that are required when you break open the thing, get it taken care of, and we're good to go on that. Prop gets overhauled. We install this thing back on Rosie, and we're up flying again, hopefully in just a couple months. That's right, a couple months is the lead time on this. Now, to help me with this project, I of course have my AMPIA uh, Jake. He is going to be here helping me take off the engine and also putting it back on. There are things me as the owner can do uh, that is not, does not violate anything. Um, since this is an unairworthy aircraft, 
I can take apart, I can take off these hoses, I can take off uh, the magneto uh, harnesses, I can do stuff like that uh, without worrying about anything because again, it's an unwear unairworthy aircraft. It's not flying. I cannot certify this aircraft to fly again. Only an AMPIA can do that. And that's not gonna happen until this engine comes back from the shop and the props overhauled. So I get to take a lot of the stuff off, document it, uh, keep everything nice and orderly. And that's what we're gonna do. Now, if you've been following me at all, you know I do a bunch of uh, owner-assisted maintenance on my aircraft. That's, that's the way the terminology for this uh, in the under supervision of my AMPIA. If I'm gonna be doing a lot of this work, I don't wanna be carrying a bunch of tools from my home here. So what did I do? Well, for my birthday, which is the 23rd of September, is tomorrow, what I decided to do was buy myself an early gift present and grab myself a 225 piece mechanics toolkit. Now, this was pretty cheap actually. Now it's from a, I guess some people would say a cheap store. Um, it's not the greatest quality, it is definitely not snap-on, but it's going to do the job for what I need it to do. And I get to leave it here and actually use it and just leave it here. Don't have to worry about trying to take it, getting parts left here and then I need them home or left at home and then here. That's a big thing for me, 45 minute drive. So with all that being said, what you're gonna see over the next two months is a lot of work done here on Rosie. You're gonna see me taking stuff off the engine. The engine's gonna get removed, it's gonna be sent off. Uh, maybe I'll get some video footage of that stuff at the facilities. We'll see, I'm out to ask. Then, what you're gonna see also is me taking the paint off. Yes, that's right. I'm going ahead and I'm gonna strip Rosie down and we're gonna get her primed and painted back up with a nice new paint scheme. There's also a lot of other stuff that we're gonna be doing us uh, taking some avionics out, sending them off to be overhauled, getting some new disc brakes put on the aircraft. There's a variety of things that we're gonna be doing here on Rosie to get her back up in the air, hopefully by January 1st, 2023. That's the goal. We'll see if we'll make it or not. We'll just have to see. So without further ado, we're gonna jump on into this engine. And we're gonna start taking stuff off. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like. That does help with the YouTube algorithm allows these videos to be seen by more people. If you like it, also you can support me. Uh, $2 a month, you can go over to um, mmflightclub.locals.com, description, or links down in the description down below. You can also become a YouTube member, whichever you prefer. I prefer you go to Locals, uh, because I get more percentage than I do from the memberships, but whichever you prefer. I'd greatly appreciate your support. Thanks again for watching, guys. So let's, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so I got the right hand or co pilot side baffling off. Now I've got to do pilot side baffling, um, I think this side is going to be a little easier. We shall she shall, we shall she shall she y'all. I can't speak apparently. We shall see. Uh, actually, now I'm looking at it. No, two bolts, okay. Yeah, so it should be actually easier. We'll find out though. Let's get to it, shall we? up the first night of work on Rosie getting the engine off. Well, I guess you could call it second because I did some other stuff the other day. But we've gotten all the baffling off. We got the entire exhaust off. 
we got all the magnetos, uh, all the spark plug connectors from the magnetos taken off. Um, they're still on the mags, of course, but I've got them all off the spark plugs. Mags are gonna have to go with the engine anyway, so I'm probably gonna be replacing the entire harness. There's a couple places that looked rubbed down and uh, one of the ends seems damaged, so probably just gonna replace the whole harness. Might as well while we're, having, while we're doing it. Um, got a bunch of hoses off, a bunch of air vents, uh, air hoses off. So we got a lot done tonight. Uh, it'll probably take another good six to eight hours to really get this engine off and uh, ready to be transported. So uh, next one, we're gonna be draining all the oil, draining the fuel from the aircraft so we can disconnect all the fuel hoses um, and all of that. So liquids, that's what's next. I gotta bring some funnels so we can get all that out of here. But uh, we're making progress and uh, good progress. So I'm ready to get this engine shipped out and the prop shipped out so that we can uh, get this thing on the process of getting repaired and we can focus on other things. So got some good ideas coming also and more than what I was thinking about earlier as well that won't add a bunch of time, but I think we'll make it look even better. So, all right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video and uh, please support me over at mmflightclub.locals.com. I would appreciate it or become a member right here on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching on Rumble, go over to Locals. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time in the hangar. but not taking off. I'm not ripping off taking off. I'm not taking off, I love you. I'm not ripping you off by saying in the hangar. I'm just saying we're in the hangar. Just saying we're in the hangar. <laughs> How about you invite me to in the hangar taking off? How about that? And then we can talk about my incident. There you go, all right. <laughs>